Hello and welcome. I'm so glad to connect with you tonight on a really important topic, at least a topic that I believe should be really concerning every one of our hearts. So thank you for making time today to join us and tell me where you're tuning in from. I love creating a kind of bubble, a vortex of love and intention before we even get started with this really important topic. So where are you from? Why are you here? Why are children important to you? Are you maybe a parent? Maybe you're a caretaker. Um, maybe you're a kid yourself. You know, there are still kids on Facebook. <laughs> so whatever, um, whoever you are, welcome. And thank you so much for being here for this really, yeah, timely topic, I feel, because we're seeing um, research being done and we're seeing statistics of for instance, the depression rate in the US skyrocketing right now. 30% of all people in April this year said they are feeling depressed. And if we look at anxiety, it's even worse. So we have 40% of all people in the US right now saying they feel anxious. They feel uh, moments of anxiety in their life. And I think not many of us are taught how to deal with these strong emotions, because one thing is clear. We're right now in global distress. Our planet has been, you know, shut down by this virus that we're facing, by the measures that our governments are taking. And some of these measures, such as social distancing and mask wearing, really are having a huge impact on our children. And just tonight, there's going to be a big TV program on Austrian television discussing with experts the impact that COVID-19 and the global lockdown has had on our children, is having on the education of our children. So I feel right now is the time that we need to sit together, just like we are right now, and discuss what is really going on and what can we do to help our children in these times? Because we know that we ourselves as adults are facing a lot of stress, adversity, maybe new challenges like never before. And we can only imagine that our children who are way more sensitive in all of their brain structures, in how they deal with stress, how they deal with challenges, you know, they're at the beginning. They're at the beginning of being taught how to do that. And I think right now we're not really teaching our children how to deal with the stress and anxiety because we often don't know ourselves. So no guilt tripping here. I'm here to help because I would like to share all I know about what is important for children in times of crisis and how can we really give them tools and an attitude towards life so that they see challenges as something that is a part of life, but also something that is necessary to grow. And it really depends on how we see a challenge that determines are we going to be a victim of our journey or are we going to be the hero of our journey? And I think you will agree that if you look at people's life stories, hi Hope, hi Gianluca, if you look at people's life stories, and there are many great stories and people out there of, you know, people who have overcome great adversity, I think where we can all agree is that challenges and adversity don't always leave you broken and crushed. They will leave you broken and crushed if you in those moments or even later don't get the tools to deal with this trauma, don't know how to shift emotions, don't know how to manage them, don't know how to just release stuff, right? So we can look at that way of life or we could see, okay, there are many people like me out there who have a bunch of experience in helping people overcome trauma, releasing anxiety, learning how to deal with emotions. So how about looking at ways that we can actually help? There are a lot of things that we can do to not only help ourselves, but also help our children thrive, especially in these times of uncertainty, where there's a lot of fear mongering going on. And let's face it, none of us have ever had a COVID-19 global pandemic, right? We don't know, our nervous system doesn't know how to deal with this. And well, our children don't know either. And they're gonna pick up what we do. So they're gonna follow us as role models, especially if we're parents and caretakers. So I think it's really important to not only think outside of the box and say, okay, what can we do for the children? But to realize that, you know, every one of us can do something for ourselves, which will have an impact on all those people around us. Because if we're in a good place, if we know how to deal with stress, then we can be role models for others and we can inspire them to do the same. So that's my intention for this little Facebook Live is to look at ways that we can actually foster resilience in our children and in ourselves. Because when we look at very successful people, we will see that they all have one trait in common. They have many traits in common, but one very important key trait is resilience. 
And that means that they don't have, they don't have no challenges. It doesn't mean that they're not stressed in their challenges, but what they have is an attitude of, okay, I fall down, I fix my crown and up I go again. So they bounce back from adversity way quicker. And I would like to show you in this call today a really good way how to overcome anxiety, how to overcome a panic attack, because we're seeing a lot of people dealing with these emotions right now. And I want to show you a really simple way how you can help yourself and others deal with this strong emotion of fear that could be, you know, part of your life right now. Because when we learn how to deal with fear, when we see it as just one of the human emotions that we all have, we can actually learn to calm our minds. And I think this is something that is very, very important because if we're in a state of anxiety, if we're in a state of strong negative emotions, did you know that a part of your brain, your highest part of the brain, the smartest part of your brain, your free frontal co prefrontal cortex actually shuts down? You do not have access to your highest wisdom if you're in a state of fear. So if we have fear as part of our life, let me teach you a tool that you can use anytime that you are feeling fear that will help you snap out of it and tune back into that highest wisdom that you actually always have within you. Okay, so um, thank you for joining me and I want to get right into this because I don't believe in webinars or Facebook lives where someone just goes talking, talking, talking the whole time without sharing the tool. So I'm going to share this tool maybe a few times in this uh, little connection, but I want to make sure that all of you who are on right now know what to do if you're feeling anxious, if your kid is feeling anxious, if you're feeling somehow, um, you know, not yourself and you know that there's something that you have to do, but you don't know what. So here's the tool, okay? The moment you notice you're feeling anxiety, fear, anything in that direction, go underneath your collarbones like this. You can also do it like this. We have here the end points of the kidney meridian. Now, the kidney meridian is the one that will get most stressed if we feel fear. So let's start tapping here. You could also be massaging. If you have a baby, right, and, and you're feeling the baby maybe is feeling fear, you could gently massage these same areas underneath their collarbones, okay? So for now, just tap with me and tune in to any tiny or big fear that you might be feeling right now. Maybe it's just a certain feeling of dread. Maybe it's a full-blown anxiety attack. Whatever it is, just notice it. And notice where in your body you feel that. Which part of your body is feeling most tense or stressed or heavy or icky or sticky right now? Just notice. Okay, and now notice how big is this emotion, right? Is it tiny? Is it small? Is it medium? Is it large or is it extra large? Or on a scale from 1 to 10, or 0 to 10, 0, there's no fear there at all. And 10, it's, oh my God, I don't know what to do, right? Just notice and, and, and determine the size. What size is your fear right now? Let me tune into mine. I'd say it's a 2, but small. Okay, okay, now you've got the size and you've defined the emotion. So now we're going to keep on tapping and we're going to set our intention, okay? So I spoke about resilience. So our end goal is that out of this state that we're in right now, we're going to come out stronger, calmer, more courageous, and feeling totally connected to our skill of resilience. Okay, we're training resilience right now. Can you keep on tapping? Okay, now close your eyes and then roll your eyes up as if you're looking through the crown of your head. Now take a breath and then keep your eyes rolled up then and say, even if I don't know how to feel calm and resilient and powerful right now, all I do know is that it is so now and I am fulfilled. I delete, delete, delete all programming that could stop me and I download, download, download everything I need to do so now with grace, ease and joy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So it is, so it shall be, or something even better. Now take one more breath. <sighs> I can stop tapping now. And then notice, notice what's different. It's definitely shifted. It's shifted for me. What's happened for you? Okay, now imagine you could breathe into your heart. You can open your eyes or just leave them closed. And as you breathe into your heart, just imagine you could drift 
lift and float to your happy place. And maybe your happy place is a beautiful, magical garden with all the animals and birds and flowers and those sweet scents of relaxation. Or maybe your happy place is a castle in the clouds or a rainbow pyramid. Just imagine all those colours. Whatever your happy place is, imagine you being there right now. Notice how calm your breath is. And notice that your breath can become even softer, calmer, filling you, nourishing you. That's right. And then imagine you could allow a little smile to come up on your face. And then inside of yourself, you could repeat, I am safe. And I am powerful. And I am strong. And I am resilient. And I am so loved. Just imagine. And then allow all those yummy feelings to flood all the cells in your body with love and healing and peace. And then take one more deep breath. And come back into the here and now. Well done. Now rub your hands together and say, yes, 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 I can do this. Let me check in. Maybe place your hands on your heart and Imagine telling me what's shifted. See if you can still find that emotion or if it is gone now. Okay, and then let me know. And yes, you can totally do this with your five-year-old son. Absolutely, Ina. So the Joyful Kids program is a program that I developed specifically for children to help them not only deal with stress, but to overcome challenges and become the heroes of their own journey. And I make those bold statements because I've included all elements that I know are important out of years, decades of working in personal transformation. So all the stuff that I've been doing mainly for adults, I've now translated into kids language. And, you know, I'm a mom of five kids. So I have three kids of my own and actually five stepchildren. So bad math there. I have eight children, right? So I've had the blessing and the honor to be part of children's lives right from, you know, an early age. And the Joyful Kids program is a program to teach children emotional intelligence and help them stay connected to their intuitive intelligence. Because in times like this, precisely, right, we need to know what's true for us, what's right for us. And the only person or the only part of you that knows exactly what is right for you is your intuition. It's your highest intelligence. And children are actually super tuned into their intuition because of their brainwave states. Up until the age of about 12, 13, when they hit puberty, all children are actually in relaxed brainwave states most of the time. So up until the age of two, they're in delta brainwave states. You and I can't even stay awake in delta. They can, right? And then from the age of two until about seven, they're in theta brainwave states. Again, a brainwave state that you and I need maybe some practice to get into. It's a meditative brainwave state. And then at the age of seven until about 12 or 13, they switch into alpha, still a relaxed brainwave state. And I feel it's time that we respect those brainwave states in our education, in the way that we teach children. So the Joyful Kids program is an approach that uses all channels of information, our kinesthetic channel, our auditory channel, our auditory uh, digital channel, so the conversation in our head, our visual channels. I've used everything that I learned in NLP, in hypnosis, in meditation, in all the stuff that I've been doing, studying psychology and everything that I could lay my hands on to understand how does the brain work? How do we humans work? Why do we have emotions? And what are these good for? How do we learn to deal with emotions in a way that really brings us grace and ease and joy in life? Because I feel we not only all deserve to pursue our happiness, I feel we deserve to find our joy. And joy and happiness are two very different things. So if any of this is of interest to you, please watch my free webinar that I hosted together with my daughter, Grace, so that I can teach you just the, the nuts and bolts, the basics of what is a Joyful Kids program about. And then you can take part in our one day online training. They're four simple lessons. They're super fun to do. Grace and I do them together. And you can join us and become a Joyful Kids Ambassador. 
What is a Joyful Kids Ambassador? Well, a Joyful Kids Ambassador is someone who's learned the techniques that I teach in the Joyful Kids program and whose heart is at helping kids. Whether you have children of yourself or you are working in an education or you just care about children, it doesn't matter. And the cool thing is that these techniques work whether you're three or 103. So the Joyful Kids program is specifically designed for the age ranges of about three to 12. But these techniques, as I just said, they work for younger and older children. If you're wondering about the tapping that we just did, how would I do that, for instance, with a baby, then you could massage the baby's points while you set your intention and you function as a surrogate for them. Or if that baby is not close to you or it doesn't want to be touched right now, you could actually do it for yourself and set your intention to be that channel of healing, that surrogate for the baby. So that always works too. Remember the power of prayer, right? The power of prayer has been researched so much and there's so much evidence that shows that when we connect our hearts, when we think loving thoughts, when we pray for each other, we're actually doing something. We're helping someone else and ourselves heal. So. The way that we set the intention just now is a very specific way of doing it that helps your brain go into that relaxed brainwave state. That's the reason why we rolled our eyes up when we set this intention. And if you missed that because you've just joined now, then just watch the replay and you can do it together with us. And this is again, the technique that I teach in the Joyful Kids program because I believe that our children deserve to become conscious creators in their lives. I think that if we help children stay connected to their hearts, to the power of their hearts and the power of their intuition, and we teach them emotional intelligence, then we have a great chance of creating a new generation of wise and compassionate leaders. And I really think that's what our planet needs right now. Would you agree? <laughs> you know, saying, my little boy always taps like me when he sees me tapping. Yes, because you're the best role model. So many people often ask me, well, what am I going to do with my grouchy teenager? What if he doesn't want to do tapping or she doesn't want to do tapping? Well, my answer to you is you do it. You show them how to do it. Let them see you practice this and they will automatically join. They'll become interested. And I think that's the way to go. We need to really walk our talk and we need to practice what we teach. And when we do that, children are really happy to join in. And then we can always offer, right? I think children don't like being forced to do something, but if they see us doing it and then we speak out an invitation, like saying, oh, I'm, I notice you, are you feeling angry right now? Are you feeling fearful right now? Um, and would you, would you like to feel happy instead? I should think most children will say, yeah, I'm kind of interested. And then you could say, I have this fun little game that we could do. Would you be willing to join me? So, you know, I love teaching compassionate communication, especially to children. And actually my first teacher in compassionate communication was our then three-year-old daughter, Grace. So she was learning compassionate communication at her preschool in Asheville, the Odyssey, amazing preschool. And by her learning compassionate communication, we learned it too. So Ryan and I started taking classes because it was so impressive to have a little three-year-old saying, you know what, I'm feeling angry right now. I need my space. I'm gonna go to my room. I was like, wow, I mean, Many adults don't have that emotional intelligence. And if we then add on to that, maybe some skills like this tapping of how do you deal with emotions? How, what can you do to let those emotions no longer rule you, but be a pleasant part of life? Because emotions are actually the spice of life, but they're not meant to be driving us because then we'll make emotional decisions and not intuitively wise decisions. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for the Joyful Kids Mastermind. Yes, thank you for mentioning that, Petra. So um, after you've watched the webinar, and let's say the webinar, you say, yeah, I get it, this is cool. And then you say, I want to do the Joyful Kids training. And then you watch that and you say, this is even cooler. Then you might say, I want to really work with Joy. I want to be part of a small circle of really committed ambassadors who want to make a difference then please join our Joyful Kids Mastermind. We're starting end of September, so there's still some time. We have a few spots left, and then we're gonna be really diving deep. Um, next lesson, we're actually gonna dive right into the five love languages for children. Did you know that there are five ways of expressing and receiving love? And children really are so receptive when you speak their love language. Because here's the thing, 
Just because you love your child doesn't mean that that child feels loved. Because if we're not speaking that child's love language, that child might never notice the love that we're sharing. So let me share another tip with you. A great way to find out what love language your child speaks is to ask them this question. How do you know I love you? How do you know I love you? When you ask a child that question, it might give you different answers. It might say, because you hug me when I'm sad. It might say, because you always say nice things to me when I'm not feeling well, you read me stories. Or it might say, because you always bring me fancy gifts and do fun things with me. Now, depending on the answer that your child gives you, you get a very clear indication of which love language is easiest for your child to speak, to receive love in. So a child that, for instance, has physical touch as their primary love language is a child that needs to be touched to feel loved in a good way, right? So these are kids who love hugs, they love snuggles, they like, love kinesthetic games like playing with Play-Doh or slime or building things with their hands, moving their bodies a lot. So when we teach kinesthetic children, we want to make sure that we always have movement in with teaching. That said, I definitely believe in movement in general. So when we speak all different channels of information, when we speak all different love languages, then we actually create connection with children. And then we don't need to be their moms. We don't need to be, uh, have known them for many years to be able to build rapport. And when we build rapport with one another, that's when we can start creating love because love actually is only micro moments of connection. They're micro moments when we share positive, so elevated emotions with each other. And when we're able to build that kind of rapport with children, children find it easy to trust. And when we have that trust and rapport, we can actually help children very, very quickly. A simple tapping exercise like I just showed you can change someone's life because finally they have a tool to be able to help themselves. And that's what I think our children need. They need life skills. They don't need even more knowledge. <laughs> they need to be taught how to deal with stress, how to overcome challenges, how to calm themselves down, how to connect to their highest intelligence, because they're damn smart. I think many of you will agree if you've been working with children or you love um, you know, dealing with children, you will know that sometimes they can say things that will blow your mind. They're so smart and intuitive. So let me see if we have any other comments. If you have questions, please ask me, right? So going back to the Joyful Kids Mastermind, if that is of interest to you, there's still time. We still have a few places left. And all it is is a commitment to meet me once a month. And all our beautiful members were a small group, so I'm not taking more than 25 members. And in this small group, we're going to be really constructively not only diving into interesting topics like these love languages, but we're also going to seek new creative ways of supporting each other. Many of us have great connections to philanthropic charities, to organizations that are already doing a lot of good. And by us getting out there and talking about joyful kids and speaking about the importance of us supporting children, we can create a whole swarm of bees, right? A whole swarm of helpers. And we could be in all different countries all over the world. So the Joyful Kids Mastermind, you can do it online. If you don't have time on that monthly session where we will be connecting, then you can always watch the replay. You also have direct access to me. So if you've done the training and you say, okay, I'm going to get out there, I want to start teaching my children, other children, whatever, then I will always be there for you as support. So you can ask me questions. I'll, I'll give you my intuitive hits. I'll, I'll give you all the help that I can because this, this is my heart project. I am here not only to spread joy while I help myself and others thrive, but I'm especially here to help the little ones. And if you'd like to join me and also start helping the little ones in a big way, I would love you to join the mastermind. If you have no idea yet what the Joyful Kids are, then watch the free webinar. Check it out and do the one day training. I guarantee it's a lot of fun. And as a bonus, you're gonna be getting a bunch of things. So we're gonna be putting that all in the comments below. So you'll find there's a special bonus if you sign up now. We love giving gifts. It's one of my love languages, right? <laughs> so there are lots of great gifts for you to be had. And now please fire away with any questions you may have. Otherwise, I'm gonna keep talking. Okay, <laughs> okay, so we talked about the love languages. We've talked about how important it is to build resilience. 
The other thing I want to tell you about children, which I think is very fascinating, is that for a child to feel loved, we not only need to be able to tune into their language of love, but they have two buckets. Actually, all humans have these two buckets that we need filled. One bucket is called attention, and the other bucket is called power. We need to feel that we have a certain element of power and control in our lives. And especially children who are often told all day and like what to do and what not to do, need these little moments where they can choose and where it's safe for them to choose. So power and attention, both buckets need to be filled. And if we have, for instance, the attention bucket not filled, then we often find children acting out in, in negative behaviors just to get attention, just to finally get their parents or caretakers' attention. So attention and power are two very important things in our relationship with children because we want to make sure that we're not getting into this game of power struggles. It's because I told you so, right? We need to be able to give our children sense in why we want to do it, but we also want to give them really clear boundaries. The importance of boundaries is because children need structure. Adults need structure too. If we have no structure in life, we can often feel really lost and powerless. So structure and boundaries are really important when we're dealing with children. And these structures and boundaries help children actually feel safe and loved. So a lot of the research is showing that the kind of laissez-faire way of bringing up children, saying, okay, any good, anything goes, you can have whatever you want, you can do whatever you want, actually leaves children not feeling loved because they then get that sense of, oh, my parents don't care. But how do we set those consequences effectively? How do we announce consequences up front? How do we make them fair? How do we make them effective? That's also something that I will be teaching in the Joyful Kids Mastermind because there's a big difference between discipline and punishment, right? And many of us ourselves were brought up in um, the concept of punishment. So the moment we do something wrong, there's going to be punishment for that. The problem about punishment is that it is not empowering for the child. It is not empowering for a human to just get the punishment. Way better is the discipline because discipline means it actually dis discipline comes from the word disciple. It means that we're learning something that we have a consequence for an action that we took and we say, oh, I get it. That might have not been smart. Now I'm going to do it different, right? So we want to come from that intention of bringing discipline into our children's lives and not the, um, the, the paradigm of uh, punishment. Because what happens if we're treating children with the punishment model is that we're actually just creating really good liars because those children will do everything to avoid that punishment. And it's not sustainable. Children will just shut down, there's no learning. So we wanna teach children not to get good at lying, we wanna teach them how to learn from the experiences that they've had. And here's the good thing about trauma. Trauma can always teach us something, as long as we don't get stuck there. And the Joyful Kids program teaches a very, very simple technique, uh, it's five steps, right? And we talk, tap five points on our body to say five different affirmations to help someone, a child, an adult, shift trauma, to step out of that state of negativity and of fear and stuckness and to be able to step into a sense of empowerment. And I think there's really nothing more powerful than teaching children the tools that they need to not only survive, but to thrive. So I, I hope this was interesting to you. If it was, do please share this video with your friends, invite them in. I would love to see even more joyful kids ambassadors all over this planet doing good, helping ourselves and others so that we can really create that shift on this planet and make sure that we're creating a generation of wise and compassionate leaders. So it was short and sweet. I know your time is precious. Thank you so much for joining me. Of course, in the Joyful Kids uh, program, I also teach children how to meditate. Um, it's way simpler than you think. I share some beautiful meditations that you can use as bedtime stories for your children. You can, of course, use them for yourself too. They enhance and support creativity and inspiration in our children because those are the two human traits that are absolutely unique to us humans. We create and we have inspiration and artificial intelligence can't do that. So I say let's support our children's creativity, let's support their resilience, and thank you so much for listening to me, and thank you for joining me. I love you. Goodbye. <laughs>